Yeah, I'm looking so flushed because of the heat. <laughs> Um, I want to welcome everybody, um, and um, uh, this is a topic we've come back to again and again, um, but um, I think most of us, this is what people wanted uh, when I asked at the end of last session, you know, what, what could we cover? They said how to maintain, if you if you've decluttered, how to maintain, so that's what we're going to do, and the most important thing about this group for anybody who's new is that um, we do like participation because people have really good questions. People have really good suggestions. You don't know how many times you might you help somebody else out with a suggestion that you make. So um, I would appreciate, you know, like your input all along the way. Um, and the other thing is, if you're new to this, and I see a couple of names I don't recognize, if you're new to this, then it would be um, really helpful to us if you put your uh, email address in the chat, because usually I send out, although I realized tonight as I sat down to the computer, I did not send out a notice that this meeting was coming up. So um, that's, but usually um, I send one out, um, you know, um, a, a week or a few days before so that um, you know, um, and a, rem a reminder um, for, for this, for the meeting. So anyway, without further ado, um, most of us are very interested in decluttering. Like Z said, that's the topic that we keep coming back to because that's the topic that people want us to talk about. And at the end of last meeting, um, somebody said about maintaining and that's really a good question because sometimes we can go through a whole flurry of decluttering, getting stuff done, moving along and we're doing great. And then we stop because we think it's done. The problem is it's never done, <laughs> never thoroughly done anyway. Um, and so um, I'm going to I'm going to say some things and please jump in if you have anything that you could possibly add because I would really appreciate it. Okay, um, so if you've decluttered, and you're pleased with the way things look and you know everything's going great and all you know so you can't just wipe your hands okay you have to keep on top of things and it it sounds onerous it doesn't have to be so terrific to get onerous you just have to develop the habits and that's another thing that we talk about in the group a lot is habits um, of you know there's a few things that you can do one of the biggest i'm going to start out with the beginning of your day make your bed okay um I was amazed to find out, um, in, you know, that there's been research done that shows you sleep better <laughs> if you get into a made bed. Um, I was very surprised at that, but apparently um, it, there's something to that. Um, and how would you feel if, if you knew that somebody was going to be coming into your bedroom? You would make your bed. Uh, but a lot of people don't. I'm always surprised at how many people, you know, don't do that because growing up, we had to. <laughs> there was no way of getting it past my dad if you didn't make your bed. Um, and um, and my kids grew up making their beds, although I don't know that they make their beds still. But John, but my husband and I have have made our bed. I think unless we live in a hotel, we made our bed every day. We've been married, <laughs> so um, and that's oh, that's 50 years. Um, so uh, anyway, so make your bed um, if. I think one of the things, it's such a positive thing as a habit because the day's hardly begun and you've gotten something done. You've gotten something done and your room looks better, um, if not wonderful. And, um, uh, you know, you, you, it's kind of, it's like a, you know, a pat on the back to, for yourself if you've made your bed. So that's my first um, bit of um, advice here. Do we have any bed makers here or we have people who prefer not to make their bed? Nobody's going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, the next thing is something we've also come back to again and again and again, which is paperwork. Okay. Um, you have to have a system for paperwork, but you also have to be on top of it because uh, I don't know about you, but I mean, like papers just grow. My husband loves this newspaper, but he doesn't always get around to it every day. And after, you know, a week, there's an awful lot of newspaper around here, but I, you know, I back off, that's his issue, not mine. And um, I, uh, I'm i not gonna nag, uh, but you know, for instance, the mail, every day when I bring the mail in, I sorted his mail, my mail, um, and we take care of whatever we can do right then. A lot of it is, you know, it's recycling, it's shredding, and it's something that either has to be done, some has to be filed or something has to be done with it. So, um, you know, if you can do that and, and take care of that paper right away, put it in the recycling, shred it if you have to shred it, um, you know, or file it. Um, and then of course you might not be able to deal with it right away if it's something that has a bill has to be paid or something like that, but you can put it, if you have a place to put those things so that when you have the time 
you know, or, you have, or, or schedule a time, schedule a special, um, you know, dealing with the inbox time and, and take care of that stuff. Um, so paperwork, that's, that's a biggie. It really is for most of us. That's a huge thing. Every day you get catalogs, you get, um, uh, you, you know, news, well, I'm not about a newspaper, not that many people get newspapers anymore. I'm a dinosaur, we get two. Um, but, um, you know, there's bills and there's, there's flyers and there's all kinds of things, but how many catalogs you get, you know, even if it's a catalog you want to keep getting because you do buy from them. Sometimes, you know, I'm not in the market for any clothes right now. So it can go right out, you know, don't sit, you know, you don't leave it around just to, so that you can see what's, you know, <laughs> what's, what's fashionable today. I don't know. Um, anyway. Um, and then there's, um, a nightly pickup. It's, it's especially important. Um, I think this crowd tends to be older, I, you know, but um, uh, especially when you have kids, putting a timer on and saying, I'm gonna buzz around and, and, and pick up for five minutes. You'd be surprised, it makes a huge difference because you're picking up the things that are most salient and most kind of in the way or whatever. Um, so even for those of us who do not have young children who have to do the, you know, the clean up, clean up, there's a little song my, uh, my son sings to his daughter. Um, but even if you don't have that, um, it's, it's not a bad idea to, you know, just buzz from room to room and see, you know, what can go, what can be put away. And it makes a big difference for when, when you get up, how much nicer is that, that, you know, um, you don't have a lot of stuff, you know, that the, the glass or the book or the, you know, um, uh, the cloth, the, the, something that you took off, it's not, you know, um, hanging around. Um, Okay, if you take it out, put it away. It sounds silly, but I think all of us know that when you, um, when you take things out and you use them, you know, how easy it is to just leave it where it is. And if you take a moment and you put it away then, that takes care of, <laughs> you know, a, a lot. Um, you know, with the five minute cleanup in the evening, you're not going to have so much stuff. You're not going to have five minutes worth of stuff to pick up. Um, and, um, you know, everything, if everything has a place, then you have a place to put it when you, you finish with it. So, you know, some things go back in the, cl the closet or the cupboard or the, you know, drawer. Other things go in the dishwasher or the dish drainer or what, you know, wherever. But everything, um, you know, when you take something out, put it away. And that's the kind of thing we tell our kids, but it, it works for us too. Um, okay, um, I'm whizzing through these. I hope I have enough material here. <laughs> um, clean up after yourself. Okay. Anything we do during the day usually means pulling something out. Okay, and especially, I think, I think this is especially true of cooking. <sighs> you know, um, because it's so easy, you know, you're, you're mixing this and you're putting that and you're stirring the other thing and you're going to, but when you're finished with the measuring cup, the spoon, the bowl, the whatever, um, put it, even if it's only put it in the sink, sometimes it helps to, to start with a sink or a dish pan with water in it and just keep putting the things in. First of all, it makes your cleanup a lot easier later, but it also keeps your kitchen looking neat. Okay. And have a, you know, a rag or a sponge or whatever for wiping up the spills, the spatters. Um, and that gives you so much um, that you're so much ahead after the meal is done and you've got to go back to the kitchen. First of all, it doesn't look as rotten as it might. Um, and, um, you know, it, it's you're halfway there to, um, you know, getting getting things finished. Um, this also goes for craft projects. Now, that's a harder Having been a crafty person when I was younger, <laughs> and not so much now, I do know that, you know, when you pull a lot of stuff out, and you do, you have to, you know, if you, things are in stages, and they're all over, and, you know, and it's not always easy to put it away right away. But try to develop a system, whether it's a big bin that you can slide under the bed or something. Um, and, um, you know, if you need to think, if you need to separate things or whatever, um, or you need a box for those paints, um, do it because, um, that's, because that's a, that's a big thing. Um, uh, you know, when you have craft stuff out and other people, they might understand the dishes in the messy kitchen because you've been cooking. They don't understand, you know, like 
you know, the quilting stuff or the um, uh, the paints and the, you know, the the um, paper mache or, or whatever it is that that you do, you know, as a craft. Uh, so I would say try to develop whatever system works for you. And it, you can't make general rules just because um, every craft is kind of different. Do we have any crafty people out there? Because I'd like to hear you help each other out here. Anybody? Um, no? Well, I am not currently doing any crafts, mm -hmm. but sometimes I have a lot of projects, which uh -huh. are, they're not crafts. Um, mm -hmm. There might be things I'm studying or, but it could be something like um, working on a puzzle, uh -huh. which might take a week or two. You know, mm -hmm. I might only something like that. Uh -huh. um, so I do find as I get one project out, Sometimes I stack the papers, but I don't always put them away. <laughs> if I put them away, I won't go back and finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think I talked about it here once before. I mean, hang on a second. Um, now, I don't know if if um, they still have it, but this was, but if they don't have it, they have something similar. This was at the container store and it's called a project box. Ah, uh, okay. So the, the, you know, like uh, this is like my notes for tonight. So this is, if, you know, like it's 11 and a half, eight, eight by 11, eight, eight by yeah. 11, whatever, you know, okay. so that um, that's like a very, you know, so you can have four or five projects or even a puzzle, the pieces maybe could go in here, but it, it's not going to sort, I know with puzzles, sometimes you want to leave things sorted out color-wise or shape-wise yeah. or whatever, you know, um, but that's a very handy thing if that's the size of your project. A lot of projects <laughs> don't fit in a, in a by 11, you know, right. um, but something that you can, you can think of. Um, sometimes you need a bin, but, um, uh, you know, it is, it is a good place. It is good to be able to put it away when you're finished. And because you might not get to it for a couple of days and then it's sitting mm -hmm. out, it's getting knocked around or, you know, so, um, or things are getting blown if the papers, uh, you know, so it, it does, um, uh, that, that can be helpful. Um, anybody else crafty or have projects that they get into? I know Beverly's an artist and that, uh, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Pat, Pat, hello, it's yes. Wale. You've told us about, you told us about before the container uh -huh. that came in very handy because I kind of went a little crazy <laughs> and bought like 17 of them. Oh, oh this the one? Oh, this this clutter like, was is perfectly organized. So thank yeah. you for that. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad something worked. <laughs> it's nice to have positive feedback. Oh, so. we always take notes. <laughs> okay, good. Um, is there anybody else want to, to have a suggestion about how they handle things like projects or, or, or crafts or um, that sort of thing? No? Okay. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Um, Dr. Pat, we had a private chat and they said accordion files, like oh, if, right. if it's like a collage project or an art project, like sometimes mm -hmm. that works too. Oh, that's a very good idea. I mean, that's a lot of people use that for their bills too. Um, that, you know, uh, or things that, or you can, you can also label them for like months of the year and put things that are coming up, you know, um, the, the accordion files can be very handy. So that's a great idea. Okay, good. Um, all right. Um, all right. <laughs> I say this, this is a mantra that um, a lot of organizers have, one in, one out. Now, I am not like totally on board with that, but I mean, I, I certainly understand the wisdom and I certainly think it's I, something it's I always keep in mind, but like they'll say like, if you buy a new pair of, sho pair of shoes, one pair has to go out. Well, if you have a designated spot for shoes and you can fit this pair in, I mean, you might want to look at your shoes. To, maybe a pair should go out, but it's not necessarily um, that to me anyway, that it has to be one in one out. But it is something to be thinking about. Like, I bought a pair of shoes. Am I going to wear all these shoes? Or is one pair really crummy? And maybe it could go out. And that's a good way to kind of keep things moving and keep things, um, you know, a little bit more organized. Um, but it's not always true. You know, if I buy 
Um, or if somebody gives me a, uh, a new necklace, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure I have to get rid of a necklace. Um, if, you know, something that doesn't take up a lot of room and something that, um, you know, I have a place to put it. I have a place where I have my necklaces. Uh, so, um, you know, but it is something, I think it is a good thing to keep in mind. Um, if I'm buying this pair of shoes to replace another pair of shoes, maybe that pair of shoes needs to go out. Um, and very often we, do, we are doing that. And sometimes things kick around well after the usefulness is spent. Uh, so it's just something that I think is a really good, um, uh, a good thing to, you know, to, to, to keep in mind. Anybody do that? Anybody have that on their radar to, to toss one thing if you, if you buy something new? I yes. do. I try. Uh -huh. Okay. I, I, cause I figure if, if there's something that I get like, and I, I want it badly that, you know, I get it. That mm -hmm. probably means that I like it better than some things that I have at home already. <laughs> um, so I, I wouldn't be looking if, you know, so then it makes it easier to kind of let go of some other things uh -huh. um, because I realized I didn't really like them that much or they weren't suitable anymore mm -hmm. or, you know, our time together, you know, had come to an end. <laughs> and I was able to let things, you know, move along in whichever you know, channel is going to be the most appropriate. And then sometimes it does feel good to kind of force yourself to get rid of some things that, you know, maybe you've been hanging on to, you know, for too long. So, but that's but good. Yes, that's, yeah. jewelry you should probably keep. <laughs> <laughs> well, not all of it. Sometimes it's like I haven't worn so long, but I think, okay, time to give this away. Right. Uh, uh, but um, that's a, um, that's a very good thing to, you know, like they, you said, if you buy something new, it's maybe because, something else has kind of outlived its usefulness or maybe it wasn't the perfect thing in the first place or whatever the reason, you know? So, okay, good, good, thank you. Um, well, can yeah. I chime in one more time, Pat? Sure, yeah, however many times I like, I like to hear right. from people. Yes. I stole an idea, or I should say borrowed an idea from my husband. He mm -hmm. scans everything and he like even a uh, receipt or anything, he'll mm -hmm. scan it real quick and he'll shred it. He's uh -huh. like, get rid of the paper, get rid of the paper. Mm -hmm. So I recall you saying many times, try to uh, reduce the clutter, reduce the papers, like the catalogs and stuff. So I've been uh -huh. really, instead of um, having them come, I've even um, canceled some catalogs, knowing that we're not going to be purchasing from that place. Right. So again, thank you for the tips. I'll have to say, I'm going to write myself a note. Um, there is something called, I know I've mentioned it before, catalog choice. And it's a service where um, you can um, a, you can give them the um, information on your catalogs and they'll cancel them for you. So um, that's especially helpful if you've got a several that you, you want to take care of. I'll have to see if I can find that info and, and pass it on to you because that's, uh, I, I did that at one time and it really reduced the mail coming in. You know, when there are a lot of catalogs, you know, one catalog company sells your name to somebody else and then, you know, you get all these things that you're really, you know, not interested and you're not in the market, you probably never will be, um, and you can let it go um, and keep it out of landfill too. Isn't that nice? <laughs> um, okay, thank you um, for that. Um, okay, uh, let's see. All right, um, shop judiciously, all right? And this is where, and I know I've said before, like stop the stuff on the way in. <laughs> So that you're kind of reducing that. Um, like I find, and partly I think it's because I'm older now that I'm, I'm not shopping as much. I'm not going around to, you know, to shop. Um, although I'm still tempted on vacation. That's something to do on a vacation, you know, like uh, buy a souvenir or something. But um, I think that um, you, uh, you know, stop and ask yourself, do I really need this? I mean, sometimes you're going out for something specific. I need X, Y, and Z. I need a, a pair of shoes to wear with this dress to this wedding, or I need to buy um, a vase because my favorite vase broke and, and that's the perfect size. I need to get another, you know. Um, so so that's something that, um, but but um, I think that um, if, you, if you ask yourself on the way to the checkout, you know, counter, do I really need this? And if I'm, do I, can I, is this something I can get rid of if I bring it home? And I'm not saying never buy anything, you know, that's impossible. Um, but, you know, uh, some people shop for something to do. You know, it's, it's something to do. It's, you know, I'll get together with my girlfriend, we'll go out shopping. 
Um, and I think that um, that's something that you really have to watch because it's so easy to say, oh, that's cute. Uh, and I think I've told this group before that um, I was in the Christmas tree shop one time and I heard these two women talking <laughs> and one says, oh, it's so cute. And then she says, what is it? <laughs> and like they were buying this thing, you know, like <laughs> or they're on their way to the checkout anyway. <laughs> what is it? So, um, you know, you, you just you just don't shop for recreation. I guess that's really how I probably should have worded this. Um, shop if you, you know, certainly shop if you need something, if you, um, if, if uh, or, you know, you need a gift, whatever, but don't just shop for the sake of, of shopping. Um, okay. Actually, and, I think you might have changed me, Dr. Pat, because I have uh -huh. noticed when I have been shopping lately, I have been kind of thinking, um, do I have room for this? Uh -huh. And is this going to be worth the trouble if I bring this home? <laughs> and do I really like and I did I did buy myself something kind of silly a couple of weekends ago, but like I really, really wanted it. And I'm, I'm looking at it right now and I'm not sorry about it. But boy, oh boy, when I was in home goods, I was thinking long and hard about did I really <laughs> want this particular thing? And in the end, it won out and I'm glad I brought it home. But um, yeah, I really did give it a lot of thought. And I, I, I think um, I think this group has, you know, changed me a little. Like probably a couple of years ago, I would have chucked way more stuff in my basket right, and yeah. figure it out. Oh, I'll just work it out when I get it home. Um, but now I really feel like when I go, um, I kind of, I do edit myself a little bit more when I'm out uh, or, yeah, or maybe yeah. I'm just prone to overthinking, but I, I think in a way it's good. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so yeah, like I, I really, I, when I went on that last shopping trip, I did come home with the one splurgy thing, but everything else in the basket was really, really practical stuff that I really needed. And there was really only the one splurgy yeah. thing. And, um, yeah, so I, I think you're, you're, your influence is, is working. <laughs> well, you know, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if you're not appreciating it more for all the thoughtfulness that went into, should I get it? Shouldn't I get it? What, you know, and, 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 you know, you're weighing the options and everything else and you chose oh, this. You yeah, really I don't know. This. I mean, it, it's, re it's a really pretty thing and, and I'm, yeah. I'm happy that I got it. So I, I don't know if I'm really, um, to the point where I'm ad admiring, you know, what a good job I did of letting myself no, no, have more, it. Maybe because of, <laughs> you know, you were so thoughtful in getting right, it. Right, right. Yeah. Instead of bringing home like a, a whole load of things and then you kind of just get numb yeah, to right. everything. Yeah. Instead of bringing home like the one thing that you really wanted right. that you would have been sorry if you left it behind. So right. yeah, yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's uh, one of like a, a quick rule, you know, that like, you know, you know, make your bed, you'll feel better, you know, when you go shopping, are you going to be really sorry if you leave it behind, you know, maybe that could be like one of our, you know, evaluating bars. Am I going to, am I, am I going to lose sleep if I don't bring this home? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's a high bar. Okay. Um, all right. Don't put it down, put it away. All right. And that's, you know, like, I mean, how many times, are, you know, like, have, have we, you heard that? I'm sure. But that's really a biggie. Like, you know, um, you know, you're, and, and I know sometimes you're going to answer the door and you put something down. And like two hours later, you say, oh, that's still there, like that glass or that whatever. Um, but for the most part, if you think about, you know, I, you know, I took this out, now I have to put it away. So some things will go right back in the cabinet. Some things have to go like in the dishwasher, whatever. But, um, uh, you know, that's something to kind of keep in mind that, um, uh, you know, now if you don't have a place for something for whatever reason, or the spot is full, now it's not always possible to stop. I know we have busy lives and we have, you know, places to go and people to see. But um, if you don't know where to put it, or it doesn't really have a home, Stop and think about that. Um, I don't know if I'm, let me see if I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, okay, no, I, anyway, um, if you, then you have to find it a home. And if you bring something home from the store, you have to find it a home. Where is this thing going to live? And there's two considerations. One is where do you have space? For, first of all, the most logical place. And if it's full, just take a look at the stuff that's in there. Like this is where this thing really should go see what else is in there and maybe something could go 
or maybe something should, belong, should, should go in another place. Maybe something that's in that cabinet really would be better suited to be someplace else anyway. Um, but there's two reasons. And one is that you need a place to put it when you're picking up. And the other thing is you need a place to look for something. <laughs> so that if something is not, if you don't um, use something that frequently, you need to, where would, where would be the first place you would look for it? That sometimes is, is the best way to figure out where something should go. Where would I, where would I look for this thing <laughs> if I wanted to find it next week? Um, and, you know, rather than walking around the house saying, where did I put that? You know, if you, um, so there's like twofold things. One is like put, well, a lot of uh, organizers will say like with like, all right? So, um, but, or, or there's a more appropriate place. So sometimes the location is near where you would use it. You know, you don't want to go three rooms over to get something that you need in the kitchen, right? You want it, you want, you want it nearby, you want it at hand. So you need a place that's kind of logical. Um, and it's also should be logical in terms of if you looked for it, where would you look for it? Um, so those are things to keep in mind with don't put it down, put it away. Um, okay. Um, and, oh, this is a biggie, I think. <laughs> I just would tell people what you want. Um, People will ask you if your birthday's coming up, Mother's Day is coming up, or your or or uh, Father's Day, or your or you know um, Christmas, whatever. What can I get you? What do you want? What would you like to have for your birthday? Um, people want to give you something, okay? So if you say, "Oh, don't get me anything," you're going to get something, okay? But it may be not what you want or need. And then you be you feel guilty about getting rid of it because somebody <clears throat> gave it to you and somebody somebody loved you loved gave it to me, you you know, um, so um, I my suggestions are these: if you have anything in mind that you would like to have and you think it's within this per person's budget, tell them, tell them, I need a green sweater, you know, or um, I I um, I need you know I'd really like to have this this. Um, I was gonna say record album, but people don't buy record albums anymore anyway. <laughs> uh, you know, Vinyl but, is back. They do, they do. Yes, yes, they do, yes, they do. <laughs> or I want, I, I, I'd like a gift certificate to Amazon so I could buy um, books from my, uh, my, my Kindle or something, you know, something along that line, whatever, whatever it is that you want, okay? Um, and don't be afraid to ask for experiences. Now, a lot of experiences cost money. But, um, uh, you know, you'd like to go to um, the botanical gardens with them, or you'd like to go to see a movie with them, or, um, you know, and then you get to spend time with the person also. And, it, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, I wouldn't pick anything, you know, extravagantly expensive, uh, but, you know, you can, you can um, uh, let them know what you would like to do. It, I, go for a walk with me. That's what I want you to give me for Mother's Day. Go for a walk with me and spend some time with me. Um, so, you you know, like if you ask for experiences or, you know, you have to know who the gift giver is and what's appropriate, you know, for the gift giver. But um, I would say um, a gift card to a restaurant, like something that you're not gonna be, have in the house when you, <laughs> when you use the gift card, uh, you know, uh, a gift card for a restaurant, a gift card for your nail salon or your, your hair, a haircut or, you know, some kind of service that you like, um, you know, that, that's always a very practical thing. It's something that you'll use, you want, you need, um, uh, but it's also not going to clutter up your home. So that's another way of keeping stuff out of your house. Um, you know, but I would say also be like I said, even even if there is something that you want, you know, clothing wise or book wise or whatever, um, you know, that's not going to be junk and it's not going to be clutter. It's going to be something that you use. So that's always, um, you know, a, a suggestion. Um, all right. Decluttering is not a once and done. And I can attest to that. It's like never done. <laughs> Just yesterday, I was going through, my, my youngest son is 35, and he never really fully moved out of here, you know, uh, so I, I went in, and, and I, you know, I pulled stuff out of his bedroom, I've been, but I looked at the closet, and I said, okay, you know, and um, I was going through some stuff, and it wasn't 
cluttered. Well, mostly it was cluttered with um, a um, uh, a pack and play, which is not his. <laughs> it had nothing to do with him. It is from his older brother's kids. But um, uh, I found this like a gym bag, like a kind of a small duffel gym, a gym bag. And I, I said, what the heck is in here? And it weighed a ton. I opened it up. There's like lacrosse gloves and lacrosse balls. The whole thing was full of, it must have been like, I don't know, 30 lacrosse balls or whatever in this thing. It was ridiculous. Um, so I uh, I texted him and I said, uh, <laughs> you don't want these in LA, do you? <laughs> no, he didn't want them. I didn't think he would. Um, and I asked his permission to see if I could give them away um, to a, uh, a local high school. Uh, maybe the lacrosse team would practice my practice balls, I don't know, or give them to some kid who can't afford a gajillion practice ball. I don't know. Anyway, so he said yes. So they're going to be on their way out the door soon. Um, uh, I'm arranging that now. Um, but it's, you know, uh, it's interesting to, you know, it's always something. And, and he's been gone. He went to college when he was 18, right? And um, he hasn't come back. He, back. he was back to live for like a couple of months maybe at one point but mostly he's not been he's not lived here and um i still have these lacrosse balls that he hasn't used since high school uh, <laughs> um okay and all right now this is this is my you guys you guys got to talk because this is this is the end of my my notes here um appreciate what you've accomplished i think very often we take for granted um, the efforts that we've made, okay, and, and what a difference it makes. Um, and even if you're not finished, even if you're not quite finished, and like, it's easy to focus on the things like, oh, you know, I didn't get to that corner of the basement, or, you know, the attic is a mess, or, you know, I, you know, I have, I did this closet, but what about these other three closets? I, you know, I'm not, I'm nowhere near where I should be. Calm down <laughs> and take a minute and appreciate what you have done and what, you know, uh, for instance, um, I wrote some down some things that were kind of the kind of thing. Um, and I would say take once once a day, remind yourself of something that's a little bit better. Um, and I wrote these, these are some of the things I wrote down. Like I can open my door to an unexpected visitor. Oh, come in. So good to see you. You know, instead of saying instead of like closing the door behind you and talking to them on the porch <laughs> or, or in the apartment hallway, you know, um, uh, and this is a biggie, your, your place is easier to clean. If you're not lifting up and putting away and getting rid of stuff so that you can wash the surface or dust the surface or vacuum a surface, you're, you're ahead, man. I mean, I found this in my kitchen that, um, you know, now that I'm a little more decluttered and all that it's easier to, you know, give my kitchen, my counters a swipe and they look great almost all the time. But that's because they're not a million, this stuff, I have them canisters, I have my coffee maker, I have, but there's not like a million things on the on the counter. So, and it makes it easier to work too. When you, um, if you're going to make something, it's nice to start out with a, <laughs> an empty surface that you can use rather than starting out by, you know, putting things away or, or ditching things in a box until you're finished. Um, so um, that's something. You're not tripping over things. You know, how many, and I don't mean necessarily literally tripping, although that happens too. Um, but you know, that you're not you're not having to um, you know push things aside or or um, you know move things to the other table or whatever. Um, you know, when there's then when there's more stuff around. So that's that's something that I appreciate. Um, you don't spend time. I don't. I, well, I, you know, I don't spend time looking for stuff. All right. Just like I said, finding a home for things. So you know where to look for it, but you know where to put it away. You're not, you're not spending, I, I read something in, when I was preparing for this, that Americans spend an average of two and a half days a year looking for stuff. Yep. Okay. So that's two and a half days and not getting back. That probably includes, that's probably 24 hour days too. <laughs> So, um, you know, that you're not digging and, and, and checking in for two and a half days is, you know, a lot of time. Um, <laughs> I, I'm really enjoying this who's he what's it's that I forgot I had and I'm sure 
uh, some of you at least have done have found that when you're decluttering, you come across something that you didn't remember that you you know that you had or whatever, and all of a sudden, you know, like you have a perfect place for it. Oh, I know what I can do with this, and and or I know who I can give this to, which is I mean, right? You're not enjoying it, but you know that somebody else is. So that's um, so that's kind of cool too, in, in a way, when you discover stuff that you didn't know that you even had, or I mean, maybe you knew. Now that you see it, oh yeah, I remember that. It was bad. I think I remember seeing that about five years ago. <laughs> it's been buried ever since. Um, and that, and this is a biggie. I feel more relaxed. Now, I don't know. I, 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 maybe you could share. And can anybody have that experience where you feel like, oh, there's more room to breathe? I feel, you know, um, I feel better about it. I mean, I just, I don't feel like, oh my goodness. Um, you know, I, I, I can't, you know, if you sit, you can sit in your easy chair, your recliner or lay down on the couch or whatever, but you're not thinking, I really shouldn't be doing this. I really shouldn't. I don't, you know, I, I really have so much to do. I should do this. You know, it doesn't mean you're going to do it. You're just not feeling, you know, good, you know, um, about all the stuff being around. And that, that feeling goes, if you're on top of things, you don't feel so, I don't want to say awful, but just like so antsy, I guess. Um, okay. Um, yeah, that uh, I should be feeling is like the worst. Yeah, I should and be you doing have it. that like I should be feeling. It <laughs> creeps into everything and you can't enjoy your coffee. You <laughs> rush through your dinner. It's like, yeah, yeah like, yeah, we, we need less of the I should be. Yeah, exactly. for sure. But then to circle back to your other point about like finding things, um, like there's nothing worse than that feeling of like knowing that like you have something special, like for a certain time of year that you want to use mm -hmm. and either you can't get to it or like it, it's, it's not as easily retrievable, mm -hmm. um, because maybe it's surrounded by other things or because you have maybe so much stuff, it's packed away so tightly that you have to you know, pull out other stuff to get to it. Like yeah. that's the worst feeling. And then, and then the window passes, especially if it's like a seasonal thing for like the holidays and then the window passes and you're like, oh, shucks, you know, now it doesn't, cause you're not really going to use like, say like a Christmas thing, like the rest of the yeah. year. And you're yeah. like, darn it. I didn't use it this year. And I really like that, that feeling stinks right. too. Yeah. Yeah. So that way, like, you know, having like a little bit less of stuff mm -hmm. to be in the way of the stuff that you really, really want to use, yeah. um, you know, totally, totally would be worth our time to, you know, editing and decluttering and, you know, <laughs> making a quicker express path to the stuff we really love. Anyway, yeah. okay. Well, you know what, <laughs> actually, you triggered an idea uh, for, for me. I, I'm a person who has a lot of stuff for every holiday. Okay, I have room in the attic and it's all lined up in chronological order, like, <laughs> you know, from Valentine's Day to Christmas kind of thing. Um, and, um, you know, so I do a lot of, of, of switching out like once a month almost, like this time of year, it's like once a month I'm, I'm switching things. Um, and, um, and the summer is a little easier. I have the same stuff all, all summer. But um, I've been trying to, to get on my own case where, if I didn't put something up, and this is, I mean, probably everybody can relate who celebrates Christmas because there's always a lot more stuff around Christmas time. If I didn't put it up, why not? If I didn't put it up this year, am I going to put it up next year? Do I really, you know, or should I be passing this on to somebody? Do you know, like, um, so, um, I mean, and I'm not talking about not putting it up because you couldn't find it. <laughs> I'm talking about you have the box and you put up a lot of, you know, your decorations. And then it's like, yeah, these two things, yeah, but they're not, you know, they're not so hot. I'm not going to put them up. So why are you keeping them boxed? You know, like that's something that, you know, maybe there's a particular reason that, you know, you would maybe use it next year. Um, I don't know what right now, but maybe, you know, you have a, a nephew that's allergic to elves or something. I don't know. <laughs> so no elves. <laughs> but, um, and he's visiting this year. So, you know, can't put up the elves. But, um, you know, but whatever it is, if it's not something, if you're, you know, if you don't think you're going to change your mind next year and this thing is all of a sudden going to look gorgeous when it looks kind of ratty this year, you know, that's think about, you know, pitching it, you know, if it's not just kind of so so, but, you know, not completely, maybe you can donate it. But, 
but get it out. Why are you hanging on to this thing? So um, that's um, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, and I, okay. And then um, here's one that I like. I actually have gotten compliments on my lovely home. You know, <laughs> and doesn't that make you feel good that you picked up the you know the pajamas that were on the floor of the living room this morning? <laughs> So that somebody can tell you that you had such a, you know, or you have a lovely home. Uh, so that's, um, you know, uh, but, you know, that's what we want people to think. And a lot of times it's just a matter of, it's not a matter of like your furniture is all, you know, pristine and new or whatever, but it's it's the fact that the house is, you can clean and um, and there's not a lot of, you know, clutter. And so the place looks, you know, more serene and peaceful. Um, and then the other one, the last one I put down, and I didn't put these in any particular order when I was thinking of them, like, I don't dread entertaining. You know, for some of us, and I, I'm included myself in this, there was a time when it was like, you're going to have somebody over, it was kind of like, okay, you know, uh, I have to spend, you know, um, Friday cleaning all day because I'm having so-and-so over, you know, sometime like on Saturday and then, you know, and on Saturday, I'm going to have to figure out what we're going to eat and whatever, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, um, or go to the liquor store or go to, you know, go shopping. And, you know, so um, that's the kind of thing where it makes, it does, it makes entertaining easy because that's one thing off your list. You don't worry about the house looking, you know, at it, it like it, it's best, you know, um, or somebody opening your medicine chest in the, in the bathroom or, or I don't know, you know, somebody who says, you know, I, I, where you like bar the kitchen door, but they want to help in the kitchen. Oh, no, no, you don't know. I'm good. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> because you don't want them to see what your pot cabinet looks like. Um, so it does make it does make things, you know, a, a lot easier. Um, so yeah, um, that's a, Pat, this is Beverly. That's uh -huh, a yeah. That's a big motivator to uh -huh. um, be able to have people in your place at any time uh -huh. without worrying about it. Like I've been finding yeah. that some of my neighbors will come by and I won't let them in. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've and, all had those moments, believe me. I know. I'm not saying that they're completely done for me either, you know, but... Uh... You know, if it's if it's one thing out, like if it's a couple of things out on a on the coffee table or something, so fine, you know. But um, if your whole house looks like it's been, uh, I remember when I had the four boys still living at home. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> but it would be impossible to keep, you know, to keep up completely. Then, so um, all right. So who's going to share now? You have well, I can say something. I, I'm <laughs> thinking about what you spoke about. Um, getting souvenirs. Mm -hmm. And usually if I take a trip, I do want to bring something back uh -huh. to that place if I had a good time. So um, a couple of years ago, I decided that I would get refrigerator magnets <laughs> because they don't take up much room mm -hmm. and, and they don't cost that much. Yeah. And I can use them on the refrigerator to hang up all the kids stuff. Mm -hmm. And I also, um, there's somebody in my family does something similar. They get spoons uh -huh. and then when they have people over, everybody gets a different spoon. Uh -huh. It always okay. starts conversations, uh -huh. um, about the places or where they've been or, and stuff like that. Um, but I did something recently. I like having pictures of family and, uh, my grandchildren, whatever on my refrigerator, mm -hmm. but it really looks awful. I know so, I'm the same way. Yes. <laughs> so I, the front of my refrigerator is, um, available to me, but the location, I all, one side of the refrigerator is also open mm -hmm. because of its location. And all I did was I moved everything from the front of the refrigerator to the side. And of mm -hmm. course I reorganized it, but it's not, it doesn't clutter up the space as much. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I noticed is I do a lot of reading. I have a lot of books and magazines mm -hmm. around. And I found if I just take the time, maybe every other day, to take the books and square, stack them and square them up mm -hmm. and just have one pile. Mm -hmm. It looks so much better than having one on the sofa and one on the arm of the chair <laughs> and three on the this table and <laughs> one's left on the rocking because I'm reading them all, you know, at the same time. 
But then so you can sometimes. find them too. If you have them all together, you can find yes. the one you want. Not you have to think about now. Where did I where was I reading that one? When yeah. <laughs> then the one thing I'm uh working on right now, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I have some magazines that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And they're really worth keeping because of their articles. Mm -hmm. um, but they accumulate and, and their uh, subscriptions that they only have six issues a year. It's not like they come every month. Yeah. So the other day I, I went through, I had a stack of them and I said, this is crazy. I, I don't know how to fit in the time to even read these. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't want to get rid of them mm -hmm. because I'm sure I will read them. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. So yeah. I, I mean, I do have these, they're plastic things you can get at Staples that they hold like about a year's worth of magazines. Mm -hmm. So I do have those and I started kind of filing them. And I said, you know, do I want to keep years and years and years of these, like, you know, the way everybody used to save National Geographic it's for 20 years? Because <laughs> so I'm still uh, working on what I'm going to do. Am I just going to recycle them or am I going to keep them? And I have know, an idea. So I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I, I have an idea. Oh, good. Okay. Cut out the articles. Well, you, you probably, all right, just, just hear me out because this might help somebody else, even if it's not your particular situation. Um, if there's an article of interest or something that you think you might refer back to, you know, like it's something that you, you know, um, I would say clip the article. Um, and now we don't have to clip every article in the magazine, uh, you know, in, under most circumstances. Um, and and make a file so that you're filing them by topic or you you know so you can find them because they're not going to be if they're in a big pile in a box someplace um, now it might be that you have project boxes for different you know topics or something i don't know but um or you might just be putting them in one box in, in the beginning but um i would say you know if you had some kind of a file system um, or even just a box, uh, you know, like a project box kind of thing, where um, when you sat down in your chair, you can um, read a couple articles and then toss them in the recycling, you know, um, that something like that would work for at least some people. Now, I don't know what you were going to say <laughs> about you. you no, know. I'm just thinking of, I can do that with, I think I can do it with one magazine, but one magazine, uh, it has maybe four or five articles. Yeah, Each article is like three or four pages because there's lots of really beautiful photography with it. And so yeah. I really need the whole magazine to be yeah. happy. <laughs> but um, I can probably do, uh, I'll probably make a project box, yeah. stack all my magazines that I feel okay getting rid of Right. once I read them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I could probably do something like that with that one. Yeah. yeah. The, other, the other solution um, is that the library uh, loans magazines. So for those yes. magazine news now, the thing is, then you would have to copy. I mean, a lot of printers though, people have home printers that have kind yeah. of copy. Um, if you really want to keep an article, um, you know, uh, you would might, you, uh, you could, you could copy it and keep the article, but um, the, um, but the, but the library loans magazines. So we don't have um, I, I do take a lot of magazines out and I do actually, I have done that with bird watching magazine that the library carries. Uh -huh. And sometimes they'll have a whole thing about a certain kind of bird and it's all on one page. Uh -huh, yeah. And so I'll bring it home and read it and then I'll make a copy of that page. Right. Mm -hmm. And that I've done. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, but that's, you know, the magazines and the catalogs can, can, accumulate quicker than you even like I right now call from wireless call I'm not going to look at that right now if they want to leave a message I can leave a message I'm sorry let me just turn call from wireless caller all right sorry about that um what was I going to say I was going to say something I can't remember either yeah <laughs> Do you remember? You're, you're, you're muted, Mary. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the magazines, the boxes, the reading yeah, the yeah. magazines at the library, the yeah. making copies at the library. 
Oh, That's kind of where we were. Just hang on a second. Yep. I also want to offer people the suggestion to read magazines online. We do have, um, for those of you who uh, want to read online, we have different um, Google has magazines now, and uh, we're really excited about that. So if you want to try reading magazines online, you could do that as well. Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. I like to hold it in my hand, though. <laughs> I know, I know what I was going to say before I was so rudely interrupted <laughs> by somebody who wanted to volunteer for the bake sale. I'm dying to get my hands on bake sale volunteers. <laughs> ah. um, this is the library, folks. Bake sale on the 29th. Um, uh, anyway, the um, uh, I have I go to the opera. And I have and I and I'm a, a, a subscriber, so I get the opera news. Which seems to come every other minute, like, and I do want to read these articles, and I just I have a place on my bookshelf, and I keep putting them on, and I'm thinking, you know, like, it's going to be next season soon, and I'm not going to, you know, and I wouldn't have read these these uh, magazines. Yeah, some things are difficult. Like I, if I go to a concert and I get the program, mm -hmm. like the Westchester Philharmonic up in uh, at Purchase, uh -huh. the program is so good. And it has all this historical information about the composer and everything. And so I keep all these programs because <laughs> I want to read them again. Or the next time I listen to that piece of music, I want to read them and remind right. myself. I finally got to a point where I cut out those things, left all the ads, threw them out. Mm -hmm. But then I had this stack of information. I think I still have it, but I don't know where it is. So. <laughs> It's not doing me I'm any good. Putting, putting stuff where you're going to retreat. Yes, I should put it with, you know, my CDs uh -huh. that I still use, yeah. unless yeah. I'm, you know, listening to Spotify. Yeah. But um, so I wonder if I, I think I still have all those. I, I should go get them out. And, uh, but you can, you can use computer. You can have all information on your computer. Yes, that's true. Whatever you want about composer, about uh, that symphony, about everything. Mm -hmm. and You're plus, right. And plus, I'm traveling. I used to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not traveling, unfortunately. But all presents for my friends and relatives, I was buying kitchen um, towels. It's very useful and it will stay with them forever. <laughs> um, yes. yes, that's true. And, and it's always so beautiful, so colorful, and it will not take a lot of place in your luggage. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, that's a good you idea. Can, you can use it and uh, everybody will appreciate it because everybody will use it. <laughs> well, you know, before when you were talking about souvenirs, um, what my husband and I have done well, probably as long as we've been married, but we get a Christmas ornament mm. that's reminiscent of the place. Like we had like a horse or something that we had, we you know, with a wreath around its neck from when we were in, you know, Saratoga or, you know, so that things have, um, uh, you know, or, or a Christmas ball that had the, you know, the main street of Breckenridge wrapped around it. So, you know, like, so, you know, it, it, that's kind of like you hanging on the tree and you're remembering these, you know, these experiences. Yes. That you had. So that's, that's another idea of kind of a, like, not such a cl clutterful mm -hmm. <laughs> souvenir, but I like the idea of the towels. That's like, a, yes. you know, the, you know, the dish towels, tea towel, that's like, um, yeah, that's good. And you, they will be used forever and they mm -hmm. will, um, you know, uh, I still really love the souvenir pennies to do the souvenir pennies in the crank machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I actually have a little album to put them in. I still love those. I know that's like really old school, but I really <laughs> love those. Although it costs you like a dollar now, just at least just like the, the dollar extra to just make the pennies. The penny, but, yeah. yeah, but I still love those. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah. I, you know, the thing is clutter, we're always going to have something with us. There's always going to be a place. I mean, if only because, um, you know, we all probably have a stash place in an emergency where we can, you know, stash stuff. Um, but I think we're, we're, as long as we're more mindful 
like, do we want to bring this into the house? Or, you know, why am I putting this back on the shelf? Um, you know, that's the kind of thing that will help us stay on track. Um, and, you know, the, the first step has to be decluttering in the first place and getting rid of all this stuff. Um, and, um, uh, you know, and it's, it, it is a job and it seems like endless, I know. Um, but um, is any, does anybody feel stuck or do you feel like you are making progress? I kind of like to know how you feel you're, you know, um, because even though we talk about, I know we talk about time management, we talk about habits, we talk about different things, but we always come back to decluttering because it's something that affects so, you know, I mean, most people, I think, you know, this, you know, saving stuff. I, and I don't think that, I don't think we really want to be, I don't think any of us really want to be minimalists. I don't think I could live, you know, with, you know, no curtains and no, you know, like everything being kind of bare and whatever. Um, but, you know, being, like getting actually getting rid of the clutter does make you feel a lot freer and uh, you enjoy your home more so mm -hmm. how, where where do people feel they are on this path well i have gotten because of this organizing group over the last year or two i have gotten rid of a lot of things um many of which i do not miss and i can't even remember what they are <laughs> but they're gone and they've left space, which makes, you know, everything feel um, calmer. Mm -hmm. um, and some stuff I've gotten rid of and given away. I'm still struggling. This is just right now because I'm in the middle switch of seasons. I've become conscious of my closets and my clothing. Uh -huh. And yeah. I... Um, I'm kind of getting it all together. And when it's all together, it's too much and I'm not using it. Yeah. I mean, some of the stuff, I did get rid of a lot of it though. Once I stopped working and I retired, um, like a year later, I looked at all my work clothes and I said, I'm not using them at all. Right. So I'll just keep two outfits. Yeah. You know? And that's, that's enough. And Something to wear to awake. <laughs> yes, I have. It's I have my wake and funeral outfit. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's you know, and I just recently um, bought a dress because mm -hmm. I had I had done a lot of work with decluttering my closet, and then I don't know where I was going someplace with people, and I wore pants and a dressy top, mm -hmm. and they were all wearing dresses, and I said I no longer own a dress. Yeah. And I don't have a skirt. I don't have anything like that. So I said, hmm, that's probably not so great. <laughs> so, um, but I, I have work to do in that. But I've gotten, um, I've just streamlined things mm -hmm. and it has made life simpler and easier. Mm -hmm. Well, with the closet cleaning, like I had gone through and I had a lot of dresses because I liked dresses to wear to work. Because um, you know you didn't have to coordinate anything. <laughs> Just yeah. put the dress on, find a pair of shoes, you know. Um, and um, so I, I did have a lot of dresses, but I've lost a lot of weight. And I, you know, so I went through and I tried everything on, and it killed me. Dresses that I absolutely loved, mm. but I don't want to fill into them any, fit into them anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you know, so I made somebody very happy. <laughs> with the size that I couldn't wear any, you know, it was too big of me. But um, but that's good too, because not everything is the same size. So, you know, like you can't just go, you just can't clean the closet by going through the labels if that's an issue, if size is an issue, oh, because yeah, you know, one store is 10 is another one's 12 or one, you know, an eight or you know, I mean like it's the kind of thing where, you know, um I probably have skirts that are span a couple of like three sizes, but they will fit me. Why is that? That's not that's not reasonable but yeah. that's what that's what's true um but yeah so that's that's one thing i would advise if you go through the closet and you haven't worn something in a while try it on and see how it looks or you know because that might make your decision for mm -hmm. you uh, when you're deciding you know oh how many dresses should i keep well try them on to see or how many you know how many skirts do i need yeah um, yeah because uh you know that's uh things that you know even even our shapes change sometimes, you know, so you may, might not really change the size so much, but, you know. Uh, yes, that's true. I, I got out my summer clothes and I realized I have 
five pair of, they're sort of like Bermuda shorts. Mm -hmm. They're the right size, but they don't fit me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I am not shaped that way anymore. <laughs> so they got to go. Yeah. So the thing is, you probably wear that size maybe in a dress or something else, but not in the Bermuda shorts, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the thing is that that's one thing I would, would suggest about clutter, like closet cleaning is try the things on as even though it, it's a pain in the neck, I know, you know, because it's, it's more time consuming, but um, unless it's ugly and you don't want to see it anymore, um, I would say try it on and don't assume that this size fits you and this size doesn't fit you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Wally, I don't know if I'm saying your name right, but you have your hand up. Wale, but it's okay. Wale. Wale, um, okay. You know those little trinkets, those cute little trinkets that we have all around the house. Mm -hmm. Someone has given us. Those are the things that I have a real problem getting rid of. Uh -huh. I did listen to you a while back. <laughs> and I did something that I'm proud of myself of. Uh -huh. and instead of being able to, to throw them away, mm -hmm. I um, inquired with friends and, and people who I love and I asked them if they would like it. So then it's like, it's still living with me through right. them. You can visit it. Yeah. So <laughs> I would like, it's like a win-win, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. I, that is, that is a good idea is to, you know, to pass it on. Just don't guilt anybody, you know, because sometimes, especially when we have sentimental, because we've done this, we've talked about this, we've talked about sentimental stuff. Um, sometimes it's kind of like, you know, well, it was grandma's, you know, don't you want this? This was, you know, grandma's or this was, you know, Aunt Matilda's or something. And, um, you know, uh, so don't, people shouldn't feel that they have to take your things, but, um, yeah, but sometimes people will say, gee, great. That's great. I love it. It'll fit right here. And, you know, it'll look great. So, um, that's, that's uh, wonderful. Uh, one thing too, that, um, you know, we've done sometimes is, um, to take a picture of something and then text it to family members. You know, anybody interested in this before it goes to the Salvation Army or, you know, Goodwill or, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, we, we don't often have people take this stuff, but sometimes we do. And then, you know, we know that it's something that they really want. They could have, they could have like not answered the text or said, forget it, you know, uh, but they didn't, they want, they wanted, they took it. So, um, you know, that comes in handy. That comes in especially handy if you have an attic full of your kid's stuff you know send send the text like if you want this claim it or it's going out <laughs> one way to get rid of it so um yeah anyway uh so we still have we really still have a lot of time uh i think maybe we maybe we've been talking about decluttering too much huh what do you think we there's no of... such thing as talking about decluttering too much oh beverly you're <laughs> back with us come on you have to share well, I was going to share a couple of things. First, I was going to say taking a photo and sending it to the kids has been really effective. Okay, good. Um, yeah, and um, and it's been everything from clothes to you know um, dishes or whatever. And and the thing is that they tell you the truth because uh -huh. you're, you're they're not looking at you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'll send it in a text and they'll text back, "No, I don't want it," and you know. They don't have to look at your face. So it, it works to your advantage. Um, the other thing I was gonna say when you were talking about organizing stuff like paints and crafts, mm -hmm. um, this is a major problem for me because I'm also doing Ikebana, so I have my paints. And then I also have everything I'm accumulating from this Japanese flower arranging course that I've been taking for several years already. Mm -hmm. And what I did is I went and I bought um, a bin well it was like a stacking not a stacking bin it's like it has trays it's a small thing but it has open trays on it okay uh -huh. like three well, I've, open I've, I've seen that, like a cart i've seen them with it I, well, i've seen them like a, as a um as a stand a standalone thing but i've also seen it as a cart with wheels on it yeah now i have that kind of cart the wheel cart for mm -hmm. my artwork for my painting but for my ikebana where i'm just doing it once a week and i don't need to access everything uh -huh. that i got a um a stable one it doesn't roll okay uh -huh. and um but the thing is that see i put my paints in bins and drawers and that's not working so well but the ikebana which is open uh -huh. and accessible is working better for me so something you know like i thought it would be better if I put everything away in drawers but on a practical basis it doesn't work when I'm painting so I have to rethink that you know yeah right 
but but it, just having it in the open little shelf and they look kind of nice and it it works you know what i mean it looks neat and then i i bought little um you know uh plastic things that all match and i stick them in there so if mm. someone's looking you know they kind of go together it looks like i deliberately organized it so so that helps um but i could also use a pep talk because um i told you that i'm kind of um injured at the moment and i was making such great progress and now i'm going backwards mm -hmm. I mean, because I just can't can't do anything. And I've been looking, the doctor wanted me to take my blood pressure. And if you think I can find my blood pressure cuff, it's somewhere in some closet and I can't get to it. And you know, if there's ever a motivation to to do things, that's it. Um, but it's like I'm, you know, you ask if everybody's stuck, anyone's stuck, and I'm stuck big time, but I realize it's because of an injury, not not because of anything else, you know, but yeah, I mean, like, what do you do? Just let it accumulate until you get better, I guess. Well, sometimes that's maybe what you have to do. Yeah. Well, that's why this was good to get on tonight. So at least I can use my mental thinking and how I maybe make a list of what I want to organize, you know, or declutter. Yeah. Well, think about and the thing is, it depends on how you feel. And you know, whether I mean, even whether you can walk on your ankle, your knee, whatever, but um, uh, you might want to think about the, like the five minute cleanup at night or something along that oh. line, you know? Well, that's a good idea. That, yeah. Yeah, I can't do too much walking. Yeah. Well, I liked your bed thing too. Um, even though I'm having trouble, I kind of make it, in, and I do feel better. I have to say, mm -hmm. absolutely true. You, you kind of make the bed, even if it's a half, as long as all those blankets aren't lying so you can see it, like mm -hmm. the, I pull the coverlet over and it, it makes me feel better, you yeah. know? Well, for a lot of people, it's like they've accomplished something in the day and they, you know, it's the beginning of the day and they've accomplished something, they've made their bed and it does make the room look nicer if it's not a, a bunch of, you know, jumbled sheets and blankets and stuff, so. Yeah, and the other thing that seems to work too is like straightening up the bathroom when I'm done a little bit. You know, so that when you come back in later on, it you know it looks better. Yeah, and that that I think that goes along with the bed. Mm -hmm. One of the things, just speaking about the bathroom, one of the things that I've found that's and helpful for the medicine chest is um, the container store. And I you can probably get the many places. Sometimes they're they're probably like desk organizers, but they're narrow enough for those little shelves in the um and you can put you know like little tiny things that you would maybe use together you know like mm -hmm. creams and or lotions or you know um uh stuff like that that um uh or, or medications or whatever in that would go together in one of these desk organizers and it would fit on the narrow shelves of medicine chest so that tends mm -hmm. to make things look neater and it's also easier to retrieve stuff you know you're not knocking over little bottles of things you can you know you pull it out you can pull out the whole the whole little bin so and hopefully no one will ever look in my medicine cabinet <laughs> <laughs> that's what we all hope <laughs> but yeah you read these things about people checking out medicine cabinets when they well actually i mean i remember reading when which kind of surprised me but um when kids who were you know what would be drug searching in med you know like young, oh. young people in medicine chests they you know they would check out what you know build it visit the elderly relatives and check out what was in the medicine chest um looking for painkillers and stuff but, you know uh, my medicine chest isn't big enough to hold much so mm -hmm. i ended up uh, i think i got it from well bed bath and beyond but i think they're gone now um uh, anyway. yeah container store but it's a really really narrow a uh, plastic set of drawers like uh -huh. maybe it's only six or seven inches wide and it fits uh -huh. between the toilet and the cabinet uh -huh. and i found that having little drawers for your makeup mm -hmm. you know and deodorant stuff like that made a big difference yeah. in you know in the bathroom i mean it's not it looks better without it no doubt but this 
functions really well in the morning. Yeah, well, it looks better than having all that stuff strewn over, over this the, near the bay around the basin or something, you know. Yes. Yeah, and you know, you know what's in what drawer, so it makes it easy to retrieve the stuff too. You know, like these are the things in my morning routine. These are the things in my evening routine. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Okay. Anybody else have any suggestions for us? I'm always interested in what other people come up with. Um, I just did something a week ago. I was at someone else's house and uh, doing some cooking with them. And I opened up the drawer in their house where, you know, that drawer where you have all your spatulas and uh, all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and they had the a pretty small plastic container flat and small and all their measuring spoons were laying in that container mm -hmm. and I was impressed because my measuring spoons you know tablespoon teaspoon so on down the line yeah always get lost under um other larger objects so now um, I came home I went through my cabinets and I found a very small thing and I said I'm using this in my my utensil drawer whatever you call <laughs> those drawers that every kitchen has yeah. and it has been so helpful it, the hardest thing for me was always where is the teaspoon measure yeah, right <laughs> it would always get lost so now it doesn't get lost yeah well I have about two or three I bake and all I have about two or three sets of measuring spoons <laughs> but yeah. you know I keep them in a mug on my counter. Oh, that's good. Because the things I have crocks for a lot of my spatulas and, and mm -hmm. wire whips and things like that. I have two crocks. And then I have this little, this mug that has all my measuring spoons. Yeah. So, you know, it's easy to pull them out. What, it, what, it, what is a crock? Oh, it's kind of, it's kind of like a, um, kind of like a vase oh, for your. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, kind of like a vase for your, uh, you know, your kitchen utensils, you know. I'm borrowing that. <laughs> well the thing I is all my measuring cups and spoons in the bowl of my kitchen aid yeah. so when i cook oh, like yeah. if i cook something savory if i'm making dinner mm -hmm. i don't really use my measuring spoon like for spices yeah. or whatever i kind of yeah. pretty much just like eyeball it but right. i really need those things for when i bake so well, baking, i just yeah. keep them yeah i just keep them all in the bowl of my kitchen aid so when yeah. the kitchen aid you know moves up on the counter you know they're all all my measuring things are just right there so right that's yeah. what i do <laughs> yeah and i did kind of what you did which was get like compartments and put it in the drawer and i and pat like you i have several sets of measuring cups mm -hmm. but the thing that i just wanted to comment on is that when you find a system like in a drawer with measuring cups that works for you mm -hmm. the test is whether it stays that way uh -huh. And the, the fact is my daughter organized this when I moved in an apartment here three years ago and it has stayed, that drawer has stayed. Yeah. It's my like uh, aspirational drawer for the rest <laughs> of the apartment. <laughs> okay, that's good. But the thing is it says, some, it says a lot for you that it stayed that way because that's what we're talking about today is maintaining and you've maintained. So pat yourself on the back, Beverly. Thank you because I hadn't. <laughs> Not really, I was saying, oh, the system is, Bonnie did such a great job, the system's so good, that's what did it. But no, I haven't been giving myself credit. No, so I, yeah, you, you kept it up. She she arranged it, yeah. and, and, and that takes, and that's a good, that she did a good job. But, you know, like you've been, you, I mean, how, how easy it is to let something like that slip, you know, and you didn't. So that's great. Well, thank you for that, Pat. <laughs> I want, to, I want to say about medicine. Some medicine you have to take only in the morning. Some medicine you have to take only in the evening. And this is the reason why I'm putting um, this medicine where I am at that time. Like on the kitchen uh -huh. when I'm eating breakfast, I have all medicine, whatever, I have to take in the morning. And uh, next to computer, I have something, whatever I have to take in the evening before I'm going to. And uh, it's made me more organized with medicine because sometimes we can forget. 
Yeah, well, that's that's a very good thing. Um, it's, it's Victoria, right? Yes. I couldn't tell from, yeah, Victoria. Um, it, that's a very good plan. Um, basically, point of use that, you know, and it's not just for medicine, although it's particularly good for medicine that, you know, that could, so that you don't forget to take it, but um, almost anything, you know, to have it near where you use it. Um, uh, Anne was talking about her, um, the, was Anne talking about the blood pressure cuff? cuff? No, so, 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 Beverly. Beverly, you, were you talking about yeah. your blood pressure? Okay, because yes. my, my husband keeps his in a kitchen cabinet, a, a low cabinet, which is near, um, which is kind of in the breakfast nook. And yeah. he sits at the table because you're supposed to put your arm, has to be on the table. Right. And um, and there's an outlet there. <laughs> oh. So it's like, it's right there um, with the table and the outlet and the, you know, and, and, and he uses it there. So it's like point of, if you can use something, um, if you can store something near where you use it, that's the most practical. It's not always, it's not always possible, but um, you know, so that's another way to think about where something should go, um, where, where you use it. Um, you well, know. that would have been a good idea because it's where I don't use it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you, I mean, the thing is, it's not always a place like, you know, like he, like he needed the table and the outlet. Right. Um, yeah. And that, this was, and there was a cabinet right there. So he was lucky, but, uh, you know, but think about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, clearly, so, it, clearly when I do find it, it needs to go somewhere else. <laughs> that much I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, but I think, I think we're all really moving on and, you know, something like this just gets us thinking about what's, um, uh, you know, what's possible and just, I mean, there's something that will spark an idea um, that somebody else can use that's, you know, so I'm, I mean, I do, I do find that it's helpful for, um, you know, uh, to chat. That's the most important thing I think that happens in this group is, is, the, is the chatting. Um, but I did want to say, um, since we do have a little time now, um, as I do at the end of every session is, what would you like to be talking about next month? Hmm. If you have any ideas, I have one idea, um, but it's kind of like a, another revisit idea. But anyway, but um, um, and just for those of you who aren't who haven't come before, I don't know. Uh, I think most of you are um, uh, on here pretty often. But um, the um, the things I talk about in general are organization, habit formation and time management. And those are the like the main overriding topics. And then we kind of get in, into like a little bit more nitty gritty. Um, uh, so, um, but, you know, and decluttering kind of comes under organizing because when you can't organize until you get rid of the stuff that you're not, that you don't need first. Um, and, um, you know, with most of us, um, you know, you always have to think about like, you know, what are the kids going to, have to go through the house or, you know, like are the kids going to be responsible for getting rid of all this stuff that I've accumulated or, or, you know, I'm going to move and you have to get rid of it because we had, we did have a session one time on moving. Um, so, um, you know, that, so that's, I think why we come back to that more often than anything else, but I'd be interested in anything anybody would like us to cover. In the yeah. chat, I put time management for sure. Time management. It always seems like maybe for the first 10 minutes i'm really good uh -huh. at keeping a time uh -huh. i've even tried like putting little alarms and stuff maybe i got to put a longer ringtone or something because sometimes you don't hear them you don't uh -huh. remember to carry the phone so time management so when so when you're talking about that type of thing are you talking about um you're not getting started or you're not ending when you want it to end or you're ending too mm -hmm. soon or what? Not ending not ending when i want it to end you get lost and not realizing, oh my gosh, I've been spending 45 minutes longer than I didn't have for this one thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't expand your day in, in terms of uh, time. Uh, for example, okay. like when it comes to decorations, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I get so lost with the decorations for a long time. Uh -huh, yeah. And you can't, can't get yourself back to where you need to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's, that's one thing we'll be considering. Anything else? Well, this is, this is just a subset of other things, but I'm finding that I have decision fatigue quicker than I used to have it, you know, um, especially when I'm looking at a big pile of papers. Uh-huh. 
And I know we talked about setting a timer, but it's like, I don't know, I have, I just don't want to have to make all these decisions. And I, that's maybe why I'm getting a little stuck. Yeah, well, that is, yeah, we did talk about that. Um, and it is, um, it is a problem for a lot of us. And, and the thing is, we've talked about the more decisions you have to make at one point, it affects your willpower, <laughs> which is like a double whammy, right? Um, so uh, one, one of the things that I thought about for next um, month, because we haven't talked about it in a while, is habit formation. Forming the habits that let you do the things you want to do. Um, so that was that's another topic that's um, that uh, that I was um, considering. So that's, um, that's a good one. That, that, that's a very good one. Uh -huh. Because that's at the root of everything, like what you we were just talking about making your bed or cleaning out the sink or whatever you do or doing yeah. your five minute walk through at the end of the day, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's a habit, if, if it's, you know, and, and what can trigger the habit and, yeah. Um, so that's, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that what I did is I tried to change too many habits at one time and it didn't work. Yeah, it does backfire because you can't, uh -huh. you know, it's like keep, it's like juggling, keeping all these balls in the air, you know, like it does take a while to um, establish a habit. Um, but I also, we also haven't done time management in a while. So I don't know. Um, I have to think about whether we're going to do time management or, um, or uh, habit formation. I'm not so sure about decision fatigue. I don't know how many um, people that affects, but, um, but it can be, um, do you, I, you know, I'll have to find, you know what, maybe what I'll do Beverly is find out, I'll find my handout and send you that. Okay. That'd be great. Yeah. It also can be integrated into the other two, because when I'm thinking about it, you know, I'm thinking, well, if you manage time well, right, and maybe do your timer thing. Yeah. And, and if you incorporate it as a habit a little every day, maybe, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like a subset. You know? Right. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. thank you for the handout. Yeah. Okay. We got a suggestion in the private chat about like relating to both of the two topics that you were talking about discipline. Like uh -huh. how to instill discipline, because both of those two topics that we talked about, right, that we're narrowing it down to, discipline is a big part of that. Right. But Men dine better. What I was doing all my life, in the evening, I will write small yellow sticker with whatever I have to do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and, what, no. <laughs> and, and it helps you because you have a plan. Mm -hmm. Somehow you manage in this way or another way. Maybe last thing on the list is going first, but you manage your time. Yeah, Victoria, I know that that's, uh, I've done that many times. Like if there's one thing that I I have to do the next day, one thing that's got to get done, I take a post-it note and I put it on my computer. <laughs> and, and that's it, you know, like that's staring at me <laughs> all day until it gets done. Um, so I, you know, I, I do like that, that post-it note idea. Um, so, um, but I think maybe, um, you know, um, I know you're talking about discipline. Um, the thing is discipline very often is, is connected more to, um, habit, developing habits, um, because then you don't need the discipline so much. It kind of like takes over, it, it, it takes a life of its own, that things just get done. Um, so I don't know, I will, um, I'll do some thinking on these things. I've written the suggestions down. Um, and, um, I definitely will do one of these. I'm not saying yet what I'm going to do. Um, I have to, <laughs> I have to plan. Well, Dr. Platt will let me know because I'll update the website. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Dr. Platt, when you decide the sooner, the better, let me know. Okay. And we'll update. yeah, yeah. I'll talk to you about it and we'll come up with something. So anyway, but I, I do want to thank you all for coming. I think this is a pretty lively bunch tonight. Uh, lots of, uh, give and take and uh, lots of great suggestions from people. So um, I do appreciate all your, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate your input. And um, I hope you all have a very happy and uncluttered, <laughs> and uncluttered um, uh, month and until we meet again.